Hello and welcome to another edition of Late Night Talks. We want to say that we had some technical difficulties this week. We had a, we actually had a different technical director in here today, and we had some difficulty kind of figuring out some of the equipment. Luckily, the camera that we record on takes audio, so you can definitely hear our conversations. You definitely know what we're talking about. <laughs> Bas- basically, what happened <laughs> Please was, watch our yeah. Show. <laughs> <laughs> Please don't click away from this show. Exactly. We uh, we don't have the microphone audio from this show, so luckily we had some backup audio recording in another part of the room, and that's that's why we have subpar audio on today's show. Right. We also have, I believe, the first two or three minutes of the show, the camera doesn't even pan over to our guests at all. Yeah, we were just having technical yeah. difficulties. This it's was a, a hard theme. week. That's a theme with L- LNT. Yeah. This was a hard week for our technical staff. Exactly. <laughs> but we still have the show for you guys, and it's a pretty interesting yeah. show. We have two Heart District teachers. And you and just FYI, you will not be able to see them for the first two or so minutes of the interview. Right. Because the camera kind of had a, an error, and it stayed on us. So but you just see more of us. Exactly. You'll be hearing their voices, and... Uh, Eventually, it fixes itself, and we see uh, our two guests. Right. And who, who are our two guests? Who These are two Heart District teachers, Julie Huffman and Ravinder Athwal, and they will be going on a NASA mission. Um, it's called the Sophia Mission, and they will be going on a 747 Boeing. Yeah, a modified Boeing, Boeing 747. Okay. They're going to be traveling thousands of feet in the air with a very expensive piece of equipment, a, a very powerful telescope. They're They're basically... Going up into the air in order to get clearer, more more crisp shots of some really like exoplanets, and you know, aliens. things yeah, possibly aliens. Would Maybe you, if you aliens. were, a, <laughs> no, if you were a professor at a at a Heart District High School, would you talk to your students about aliens? I mean, I feel like that's what the kids are going to be interested in. You have to draw them into science, right? Yeah. And if you're talking about, I don't know, what's a boring science thing? Uh, mm, micro. <laughs> Uh, organism, yeah, nucleuses, then maybe... Oh, the, the, the professors are going to have such a good time <laughs> hearing, hearing this part of the show later on. I know, but, but yeah, aliens are cool. And we talk about the possibility of extra ter- extra uh, extraterrestrial... A- extraterrestrial life. <laughs> extraterrestrial life, exactly. <laughs> late night talks. <laughs> it's really late, you guys. It's 6.03 p.m. We're as good as college radio gets. Exactly. So not that good. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. But we have, we still have a, an awesome show for you guys, um, and the audio is is it's it's there, and you can and you'll be able to listen yeah, to the entire. Yeah, it's show. subpar, but you can understand us. Exactly. And we will apologize for that now, and it will be better next week. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Well, I hope you guys enjoy the show, and and we will be back with Julie Huffman and Ravinder Athwal from the Heart District. They've been uh, very caring. They care about every every single student that's in the class. Everyone seems to be like pretty friendly with each other. Like no one's really afraid to ask each other for help. It's working with other people, not uh, being ornery. Uh, actually, you know, listening to what people say, collaborating with them to create a really good product. It's great to use the same stuff the pros use, especially at a community college. Hopefully we give them a pathway to, to have their creativity uh, showcased. I've gotten a great education. I love the access to equipment. I've made lifelong friendships. I have great teachers. Hello and welcome back to Late Night Talks. We're joined now by Julie Huffman and Ravinder. Ravinder? Ravinder. 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 Athwal, what's so interesting about you guys? What's going to be happening later this year? What is interesting about us? Uh, we are going up on a NASA Sophia mission, uh, representing our school district um, and kind of science educators all around the country. Mm-hmm. And you guys are from the Hart School District. You're local to the Santa Cruz Valley. Yes. And you guys are going on a NASA mission. What exactly is that NASA mission? Okay, the NASA mission, it's a it's acronym. Sophia is an acronym for Stratospheric Observatory for infrared astronomy. Mm. So what we do uh, on this NASA mission is we observe other planets and celestial objects um, in a specially outfitted uh, NASA plane that goes above the atmosphere. Wow. And we use 
especially uh, special equipment that is uh, made so that it um, observes things above the atmosphere and we can get a reading that we can't get on the ground. So surely a lot of professors would love to go on a NASA mission so that they can come back and report to their students. Why were you guys put in a position to be able to do this? Uh, we were just very, very fortunate. Uh, we heard about the program. NASA has set this up to um, try to elicit excitement and energy um, and achievement in students around the country. And they've gone out looking for districts to work with them. They came to ours in September. Um, we saw them out at a conference and they were soliciting people and they said that if we could get a team together, um, we could go up. So we got busy and got a team together. We're, there are 12 of us involved um, and we're just... 12 that are from the Heart District. Yeah, 12 from the Heart District. It's pretty much my understanding that's the biggest group NASA has ever had. Um, there are, on our particular, our particular group is being cut in half. Um, six of us are going up this fall and the other six are going next fall. And the only other groups that I know of that have multiple teachers, Anaheim, is believe, I believe, is taking up three teachers. Um, that's about the closest to we have the volume. Wow. Yes, so we're pretty excited. So were your students excited? I'm sure they, they saw the press release and kind of freaked out when they saw you, all of you guys, your NASA teachers. I had a bunch of students that just came up to me and like, Ravinder, my grandma saw you. You're going up to NASA. <laughs> I was like, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah, I am. And I didn't want to be you know, too rude and too, but you know it was fun. It was fun to see their excitement in their faces. I, it was fun to see parents say, do the same thing. It was fun to see other teachers uh, be excited about it as well. So what's the process? Uh, how do you guys get selected to be one of the twelve? Um, all of our teachers had to apply. Uh, it was a pretty lengthy application. They had to write um, quite a bit about themselves there history and science education, um, all of their the science teaching credentials, and thoughts and... Current teachers of astronomy, physics, or uh, earth science. Yeah, so, and uh, talk about why they were excited about going up and what they plan to be able to bring back to their own students. And then that information went to a panel, um, NASA, the actual SETI Institute, which is 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 kind of where Sophia lands, no pun intended, where Sophia lands under, <laughs> and uh, then WestEd, and WestEd is an organization that collects data, educational data, so that our ambassadors that go out on the plane, they are part of the deal is that they have to go back and, and sh do two weeks of of NASA Sophia instruction in their own classrooms, and WestEd will collect that data. So those three groups sat down together and looked at every single application and actually spoke to me. I got interviewed about each one of you guys, and uh, that's kind of how they made their final decisions. And the data you're going to collect up there, you're going to be going up on this Boeing aircraft, mm -hmm. 39,000 to 45,000 feet above. Um, we uh, call that almost space at my almost. house, yeah. What is space? <laughs> Um, so 45,000 will be the level you guys hit, the top we, level. What is we're space? We're going to go above 40. Uh, it's okay. my understanding from the NASA people, mm -hmm. we will get almost to 50,000. And 60,000 is where you see darkness and the curvature of the Earth. So and the I mission consider is, it to be almost space. I consider it to be almost space. <laughs> but, I, I mean, you know, technically there's other spheres of the Earth's atmosphere that are above that, you know, all the way up to the thermosphere, which go up to 120,000 uh, feet. Right. But we get pretty far up there, above uh, most of the atmosphere, most of uh, all of the stuff that blocks off the sun's rays and all the radiation. Okay. And the mission is about 10 to 12 days? Uh, we will go up for about a week, okay. roughly about a, week. a week, and we are guaranteed, well, as much as we can be guaranteed, one mission for sure overnight and possibly right. two. Right. Okay, so, so you guys will stay up there for maybe a day or two at a time. You guys will be up there the whole time, but the actual mission, you... you no, know, we okay. will stay up, we will go up on the plane in 10 hour slices Anyways. of time, overnight. Okay. okay. The missions are overnight and they sequester us basically in Palmdale. Um, we go out of uh, Ames Flight Research Center, mm -hmm. but we are, we're kind of sequestered there to get enough rest. That's like a really big issue. There's lots Probably of training. Probably worried about you getting sick too, right? Yeah, and, and there's a lot of training that week that continues to go on, and those 10-hour overnight missions can be kind of hard on your body if you're not used to staying up all night, which I think most of us aren't at 
this point. <laughs> oh, but, you know, we stay up all night thinking about students Great and how to get and all that. But, you know, no. we're not used to that. Um, it's also, uh, we have to be really just focused on the mission. So they, even the people that are in Santa Clara that are an hour away, they're not allowed to go back home. So it's 24 hours a day for a week away from your family, away from everything. And that's kind of exciting, kind of scary. You know, mm -hmm. you're, you're responsible for the family, but I, I can't wait. I want to ask you what your families think about this a little bit later, but I, I just want to get an understanding of what the mission actually is. Uh, to my understanding, in, in simple terms, you guys are going that high up so that you can get a better, you're going to bring a telescope up there and you're going to get a better look. And you're able to, to look in the infrared part of the spectrum, not the visible light spectrum. So it's collecting images from celestial objects, other planetary systems in our universe. And um, basically, what I understand it to be is that we are pretty much going to be tagged up with the NASA scientists, um, discussing side by side with them as they collect data. Astrophysicists come up with the science that they want to get data on, and they give proposals to NASA, and then NASA chooses which ones they want to do, and then Sophia goes up to collect the data that they need to substantiate, substantiate their research. So we'll, we will be working with NASA scientists side by side with them, right. and the pretty much the entire crew, the flight plan, we all of it, we will be it. part of. We go through and we tour the uh, instrumentation. We tour where they uh, fix and uh, mount all of the uh, instruments onto the plane. We uh, look at the mechanical portion, like you know uh, the repairs. We look at the labs. We look at all of that. Uh, uh, we go through the training on how to uh, safely get out of the plane because of an emergency. Mm -hmm. That's a six-hour training by itself. So that's a long, you know, they want to make sure that nobody gets hurt. Right. What's the so benefit of going up there as opposed to taking the same infrared shots from down okay. here? Um, I think uh, one of the uh, best uh, telescopes we have is in Hawaii. Um, we have one that's on top of a really, really tall mountain. Uh, I think it's not okay. Um, but the reason it's we're very high is because you want to be as far uh, far up into the atmosphere as possible because our atmosphere blocks out a lot of the radiation from the celestial objects. It blocks off uh, x-rays and radio waves, a lot of the radio waves and a lot of um, gamma rays and things like that that are dangerous to us, so it's fortunate for us that our atmosphere blocks it off blocks all that, but it's also hard for us to observe those things from other things coming down. So if we get above that, we can get a lot of the infrared coming down, coming into Earth from far away as celestial objects. Without as much interference, without, without any interference, any interference really. Yeah. Right. I know you guys talked a lot about, you said there was a six hour training, just learning what to do in an emergency. I mean, how many hours of training are you guys going to go through and, and what kind of training? Okay, there is six hours of just webinars in terms of logistics of what's going on. There is a 45 hour uh, astronomy course that we have to take on our own just to learn about the different telescopes and how the telescopes are made and how they're mounted and everything like that. Um, and then we have full day training and then we have, uh, in June. And yeah, then in June, June 3rd uh, I'm going up to uh, the SETI Institute in the Bay Area, and I'm going to have a full day training there, and then we have training at, during the week as well when, when we're up there. Are you guys going to be a part of the mission this year or next year? I'm a part of the mission this year in uh, um, October. Um, my uh, colleagues from other schools, we've been split up into different groups. Some of them are going up in next year, I believe. And I can announce, I'm actually um, the liaison for the district between NASA. Um, I'm not a classroom teacher at the moment, but so I get a little more freedom. I get to pick which one I go on. Um, <laughs> but I picked because it's actually the first mission is going up uh, the week of my birthday. Hello. Uh, which is really a cool way to spend your birthday. Yeah, you're gonna, yeah. that's the best birthday present right? you can get. Yeah. Right. And um, your mission is the week of Halloween. Yeah, I get to go up on Halloween. That's cool. It's spooky. Are they going to put like jack-o'-lanterns in the plane? And I don't know about that. I'm thinking I'll bring some aliens back. <laughs> well, when, when people ask you what you're going to be for Halloween, you tell them astronaut, right? Really? You have to. I don't have to say it. I just say I am an astronaut. I am. <laughs> well, there's a lot of other things I want to talk to you guys. It must be like really intimidating to, to do something like this, but I just kind of want to 
find out what your mindset is. And so we're gonna take a quick break and, uh, and we'll return in a little bit. We focus on students. We're a learner-centered environment and we help students make that transition. And we're live with Canyons Radio, your only radio station for College of the Canyons. They take the time out of their day and out of their work schedule to really make sure that the students here are getting the best that they can. There's a lot of input from the teachers as well as different uh, materials that you can work with. It's really friendly here, like all the students are so nice and everybody kind of seems to want to get to know each other. They come in here and they just want to present great pictures and beautiful art. The COC MEA program has given me many tools to use in the field, and I love using the same equipment as the pros. Late night talks. Um, I want to know a little bit about, you know, if you guys have any fears about going up on this. I mean, there's movies out there, and every space movie, it seems like there's something that goes wrong. Or, and I do this training where if there's emergency, an emergency, they teach you what to do. Is there any queasy feelings about this? I don't have any. Um, my daughter's a little nervous about it, but uh, <laughs> I have absolutely. I have no a lot problem. of insurance for it. <laughs> um, I think that uh, NASA is super, super, super committed to safety. And especially when they have a, a public school teachers on board um, that didn't really sign a contract for some of those risks, um, I think that I feel very safe. And I'm not worried. I, I take care I, of you guys. I completely yeah. agree. I, mean, I, just, I think uh, just because it's public school teachers and it's NASA. I mean, NASA, they scrap a flight for because, you know, like there was a bug that uh, flew in wrong or something. Right. They, they scrap flights all the time. And so I know that they're really safety conscious. I mean, to give six hours training just to how to get out of the plane is right. amazing. And the plane itself seems pretty safe. Can you tell me a little bit about the plane? How big is it? Well, do you want to hear something really um, fun yeah. and creepy at the same time? One of the things we have to have for a um, I don't know if you'd call it for safety reasons, but we all have to carry passports with us. Um, it does have to do with Ames Flight Research Center and, and being on that property to begin with. You have to have a passport. Um, but it's also in the event that... Where is that property? Like, um, in Palmdale. The need a passport to go into Palmdale? Just to go on to the government property. Interesting. Um, but you also have to carry a passport in the event that the plane would have to land somewhere unexpected, okay. like in Canada yeah. or, Mexico. or Mexico or Cuba <laughs> or, or Europe somewhere. Or, that'd be awesome. <laughs> yeah, so this is a modified 747. Boeing 747. Why is it modified and what is modified about this plane? Why is it so cool? Well, it's hey. modified. You were telling us about it. You, you've been on, one of you have been on the plane. Yeah, I got you've to go on up the plane. on it. Okay. They basically cut a big hole in the side of a 747 to put this telescope on it. And not only do they have to put a telescope on it, but they have to be op they have to be able to open that payload door wide open in flight to um, get those images. So, so when you go inside this thing, does it have like the normal fuselage with all the seats in it, or does it look different? Um, it looks different. They have um, like the first class area. They do have some seats there, but then the entire rest of the plane, most of it is filled with the telescope itself and the instrumentation that supports it. And it has like a great deal of pneumatics that right. kind of prevent the shock waves from damaging the telescope at all. Um, well, and it's all instrumentation. It looks kind of like mission control inside. There's computer set up the whole um, length of the interior, and it's all instrumentation. Well, much. the telescopes have to be aimed at certain celestial objects, and they have to stay aimed at that thing for a long period of time, even though the plane is moving. So there has to be a lot of that instrumentation, the, the shocks, the, the uh, hydraulic system, will keep, keep it focused on that particular thing that you're uh, observing. So that's part of the instrumentation. The other part of the instrumentation, they got to cool this. Uh, the because you're observing infrared, you have to cool these things down to really, really cold temperatures, so that you can observe the heat, which is infrared energy coming from these things. I know that. I mean, like NASA is a big deal. Obviously, it's it's the space station, and and um, you guys 
have you are you intimidated to work with with scientists or anything like that? I mean, I'm listening to you guys talk about science, and I'm like, oh, I don't know if if I really know what they're talking about. Are you guys scared about? Like talking to, to NASA scientists, and is um, that going to be intimidating? The plane has been around for quite a while. Right. I'm not going to venture to guess how many years, um, but it has been around for a while. So the scientists are used to um, working with lay people. Okay. Um, I think that the plan has changed. It used to be that they would take up teachers um, from all over the country at all different grade levels, all different content areas. And they did change the program recently to just include physics, earth, and astronomy mm -hmm. teachers um, because they have the degrees already and, and the expertise. Obviously, probably not quite the same thing as a NASA engineer probably not. who specializes in But in a certain respect, you do speak the same language yeah, that they do. Yeah, absolutely. Right. And some of us speak a better language than others. I'm a chemistry teacher, so this is, I am, I'm a little uncomfortable um, with some of it, but some of it I'm very comfortable with, so the whole I speak and translate student language. <laughs> All the time. I am not <laughs> anymore. So uh, student language is, I think I'm, I would be intimidated by student language, because students sometimes intimidate me. <laughs> but I don't think NASA scientists would intimidate me. We're like excited to hang with the nerds. Oh yeah, we are, we are, we are, we're like big geeks and nerds. Yeah. Yeah, you're going to be up there with that big piece of equipment. That telescope, that telescope yeah. must be expensive. Yes, right? yes. Very, very expensive. Yeah. And it was a, it's done through a partnership with the German aerospace uh, DLR, I think is the name of it. Um, so they've spent quite a bit of money getting that funded. You hear a lot of people complaining about NASA not getting the funding that some people think it should have, yet, you know, I still see missions going on. Um, why do people have this notion that NASA is defunct and we don't, we don't hear so much from them anymore? We don't see astronauts going here and there. Well, there was a push several years ago to, to privatize space flight. Um, which did take some funding away from NASA. Uh, for, for companies like space, SpaceX? Right. Okay. To start making it more competitive in the private world. Um, I, we were very glad that this got funded. Uh, we were told back during the early phases of this that there was a possibility there wouldn't be funding in this budget. Right. But there was, and there is. And, that's what we're thrilled about. Do you think the future of space travel will be a, a private company like SpaceX, or do you think NASA will continue to push forward and, and be the one possibly who goes to Mars? I think they're going to work together. I, I think it's going to be a, a, a cooperation between public and private. It's not going to be a, a private because you know, you don't private can't uh, can't take the losses, and it can, it's not going to be just public because public it, they need a profit motive in order to be more efficient. So uh, together, I think it'll be it'll, it'll work better. Um, Mars is the new big thing. Is that kind of the the next big step humanity might take? Uh, I would say so. A flight from the moon to Mars um, is a distinct possibility. I don't know if that'll happen in my lifetime. Is that the way they would do it? They wouldn't go straight lifetime. from here to Mars. They'll go to the moon. Um, and to Mars? That's what I believe right now is that they would leave for Mars because of the atmosphere or the lack of atmosphere um, and issues of gravity. They'd have an easier time going from there. That's what I believe right now, but I have not really looked into it in a little while. So, As far as the infrared photos that you guys are taking go, are you guys going to be taking pictures of bodies like Mars, or are we, are we looking even further than that? Further than that. Further, way further. They just were able, one of the recent things that Sophia did was to look at the, um, I have it somewhere, it's got a really <laughs> crazy name to the Epsilon Eridan, the new um, solar system, the planetary system that you read all about in the papers. And, and so Sophia was able to actually um, confirm the fact that it is a planetary system very similar to ours. Um, so they were collecting data on that as well. So, these so are they're the going out into the universe. And they, they could find, I believe they're called exoplanets? Yes. Planets that are yes. like Earth-like exactly. or could be in the same uh, it's further away from its star. It's as, about as far away from its star as we are from our exactly. sun. So there could be life there. Is, is, you guys, are you guys going to be making progress on finding other human life when you go on your mission? I... You know what? Uh, lately, uh, there's, been, there's been a lot of... Uh, just uh, from the Hubble Telescope and some of the other telescopes that are already out there, they're finding a lot of planets that are Earth-like. 
they're much bigger than Earth, but there are a lot of them that are possibly habitable. Yeah, same planetary orbit. Right. Um, I would think it's very arrogant to think that it's Real impossible. Um, that's I, all I, I'm I agree. Say. I agree. <laughs> I agree. It would be very arrogant to think that we're the only ones. But again, you know, you, until you actually confirm life, you can't say that it exists. So it's just a scientific belief in mine. Until you until you actually confirm that something actually has happened, you can't say that it has or has not. That's more scientific. But I think it would be get arrogant to think that it couldn't be. Oh, I didn't say as it. Huge, as massive as our universe is, true, right? True. True. And then we talk about that with, the, with our students all the time. That, you know, think about the probabilities of not having life. You know, think about the billions and billions of stars just in our galaxy. And, and of those billions and billions of stars, there are probably billions and billions of planets. And if there's billions and billions of planets, there got to be at least one other one. Right. Yeah. Do you do a lot of science? Do do science teachers talk about this together? Is that something like, oh, do you believe that there might be some extraterrestrial life? Uh, some more than others, but yeah. I'm an astronomy yeah. teacher, so I, I I get to think about those kind of things. I, I I have students that are little different, so they get excited about talking about the conspiracy theories, and they're they excited <laughs> about talking about the, you know that yeah. life actually yeah. exists. And sometimes you got to take them on that on that uh, tangent in order to get them excited and bring them back so that they can learn about the planets, they can learn about the stars, they can learn about everything else. Because you have to get them excited first and then go, okay, yeah, let's le learn how it could possibly happen. Uh, I want to thank you two for joining us today. It's been fascinating learning about, I don't know, we have locals here who are going to be doing something that I think is very important and it's, it's cool to have you guys in the studio and I thank you for coming down and talking to us. Thank you. Uh, Thank you, know, you. Can you guys tell us a little bit about the mission? Like, when will it be taken off? When can we expect to hear about how it went? ETC? Well, I believe I'm going on the one uh, in September. I'm going in October, so I'm going after you. And I, I don't think we're allowed to share those results for a while, right? The dates? Yeah. No, 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 no dates we can, yeah. but I don't think the results of what we actually learned until... Yeah, we won't be able to share that right away. Um, we, we're doing a... a research almost a situation here where they're comparing uh, student data between our two cohorts, our two groups, um, and one of them is the control and one of them isn't. So they're not allowed to talk to each other about what they're doing on board. It's a secret NASA mission. Uh, That's I know, cool. right? It's a secret mission, yeah. Yeah, awesome. Well, thank you very much for, for coming down. We appreciate it. Thank you. Um, and I guess we'll be back next week with another Late Night Talks. See you guys next week. Have Thank a good you. one. Thank, Thank you. you.